All right, if you take a look at this, it really does look like something from the future. For years, other regions in the U.S. have launched several projects connecting trains to airports. For example, the O'Hare branch of the Blue Line extension and the A-Line connecting DIA to downtown Denver, among others. After years of waiting, complaints, and a lot of taxpayer money, Los Angeles is finally taking its step toward a new state-of-the-art train system aimed at improving the travel experience and making a bold statement for America in the global train industry. It's called the Automated People Mover, and it comes with a massive price tag, $3.34 billion. But here's the kicker. This huge amount of money is coming from taxpayer funds. Big number, right? So what makes this project so expensive? Let's dive in and find out in this episode of Great Train Speed. The Automated People Mover, APM, is a driverless train system currently under construction at LAX designed to connect to the metro rail system. Right now, the SkyTrain is in the testing phase, with all 44 Alstom-made train cars expected to be in place by August 2024. The full system is set to open in 2026, marking a major milestone for the U.S. rail industry. The SkyTrain will run along a 2.25-mile elevated track, stopping at six key stations throughout Los Angeles International Airport. Each train car will have space for up to 50 passengers, with 12 seats and ample standing room. During peak hours, nine four-car trains will run simultaneously, each carrying about 200 people. Altogether, the system will be able to handle up to 6,000 passengers per hour in each direction, making travel across the airport faster and more efficient. Looking ahead, LAX is expected to handle over 125 million passengers annually by 2030. The SkyTrain is key to managing that growth while reducing emissions. By replacing gas-powered shuttles and cutting down on car trips to the terminals, the system should help lower greenhouse gas emissions and improve air quality around the airport. This project is also part of LA's broader effort to reduce traffic congestion around the airport. The SkyTrain is projected to reduce peak hour traffic by about 27%, easing congestion not only within LAX, but also on the surrounding highways and main roads. Once operational, the SkyTrain will be free to ride and run 24-7. During busy periods, a train will arrive every two minutes, and the full trip, from one end of the line to the other, will take just 10 minutes. Also, this project contributes to creating thousands of construction jobs and will generate ongoing employment and operations and maintenance. Even though a lot of people aren't thrilled about the SkyTrain's price tag, and honestly, who can blame them? The project kicked off in 2019, but now it's not expected to open until January 2026. That's a pretty long delay. It was supposed to be done by 2023, but there's been a lot of mess along the way. Legal issues, contractor disputes, and hefty payouts just to keep things moving. When you look at other similar projects, the SkyTrain's price starts to stand out. Take the BART extension to San Francisco International Airport, for example. That one opened in 2003 and cost around $1.5 billion to extend the BART system, about 8.7 miles from Daly City to the airport, making access to SFO much easier. Then there's the Chicago O'Hare Blue Line extension, which set the city back about $2.3 billion. It's helped connect downtown Chicago to O'Hare more efficiently, making travel to the airport faster. And let's not forget Denver's A-Line, which connects Denver International Airport, DEN, to downtown Denver. The project, which wrapped up in 2016, also cost around $2.3 billion for a 23-mile commuter rail that cuts down on travel time to the airport. It's clear that the SkyTrain is going to cost more than these projects, requiring even more taxpayer money. What really got people riled up was hearing that the city had to shell out another $600 million just to settle claims. One comment put it bluntly. The contractor messed up, wouldn't admit it, and basically held the whole project hostage until LA paid up. That kind of thing doesn't sit well with folks. And then there's the cost. Over $2 billion for a 1.6 mile people mover that connects a stadium to a rail station? Some are asking how it makes sense to pour that much money, taxpayer money, into such a short route, even if it's high tech and elevated. One person summed it up perfectly. How? Despite all the benefits this project offers, some people still argue that the cost is too high. So what's driving up the price? 
Let's take a closer look in the next section. And if you're finding this interesting, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on what's coming next. Apparently, most of the money for the SkyTrain comes from Los Angeles World Airports, the agency that runs LAX. The LA City Council approved budgets and extra funds when needed. There's no official word on whether the federal government helped pay for this project, but big airport projects often get support from the U.S. Department of Transportation through special grants or improvement programs. As we all know, the project has been under study since 2018, with construction starting in 2019. Initially, the line was planned to open in 2023, but unforeseen hurdles delayed the timeline. The project is now expected to be completed by December 8, 2025, with operations slated to begin in early 2026. Nearly 10 years later, quite a long time, right? An arbitrator determined that Los Angeles World Airports was responsible for nearly two years of delays. This was due to their failure to integrate the APM with its communications network and the delayed construction of the Metro Rail's LAX Metro Transit Center. As a result, the airport and the city agreed to pay an additional $600 million in change orders to the contractors. And yes, as time passes and inflation takes its toll, the project, which was initially estimated at $2.9 billion, has now become one of the most expensive airport upgrades in the country. It is projected to cost more than $3.3 billion, and that figure could continue to rise, as the project is still not in service. In 2024 alone in May, Los Angeles approved an additional $200 million in contingency funds to address legal claims from contractors working on the project. Despite this, Los Angeles World Airports and the Lynx Consortium have been negotiating in good faith for over a year to resolve the issues causing the delays. However, even this amount of money isn't enough. By August, the Los Angeles City Council approved another $400 million to ensure the project's timely completion, especially with major events on the horizon, including the 2026 FIFA World Cup and the 2028 Summer Olympic Games. Plus, the project also brought in a new station, the LA Metro Transit Center, which cost almost $900 million. It's now up and running, and it's a big win for public transit in LA. We've got all the details on this on our channel. Check it out if you want to learn more about this cool new addition. Even though the cost of this project is huge, it's not the first time the US has seen such a massive price tag for a transit system. Take New York's 2nd Avenue subway, for example. The first phase of the project was completed in 2017 and cost over $17 billion despite covering just 8.5 miles and 16 stations. A big part of the cost came from the same challenges LA is facing right now, building in crowded areas. In cities like New York and Los Angeles, there's no room to just tear down everything and start fresh. Construction often has to work around existing buildings, businesses, and other infrastructure, which adds complexity and drives up costs higher. Another project to consider is the Washington DC Metro's Silver Line. The first phase of this project cost around $3 billion for just 23 miles of track, but the second phase nearly doubled that to almost $6 billion. A big chunk of this increase came from the expenses involved in buying land, dealing with local regulations, and integrating new technology into the system. When you look at these examples, it's clear that large-scale transit projects like these aren't cheap. In fact, had they been built earlier, they may not have been as expensive, but when you're building in busy cities with already high costs, expenses naturally rise. On top of that, factors like rising labor wages, more expensive materials, and lengthy environmental reviews add even more to the overall cost. So, when all is said and done, it's easy to understand why these projects end up costing so much. To wrap it up, the $3.34 billion price tag for the Los Angeles SkyTrain might sound like a lot, but it's a necessary investment for the future. Even with the delays and higher costs, the SkyTrain will help handle more passengers, cut down on traffic, and clean up the air around LAX. Sure, it's expensive, but in the long run, it's gonna make getting around LA easier and more eco-friendly, making it worth the cost for the city and everyone who lives here. And that's a wrap. 
Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for sticking around. Catch you next time. Peace.